Today, we will be looking at these two cameras from UFI. This is the exterior model, and this is the interior model. One is for outdoor, and one is for indoor. The outdoor model is just a hair bigger, because it's weatherproof to withstand the weather. On the bottom, you have the connect reset button. Next to it is the micro SD card slot. The indoor model has the micro SD card slot on the side and it has absolutely no weather protection whatsoever. So don't even try this outdoor. Both of them are powered by micro USB. Everything is included, including the cords and the power adapter. This is what the indoor model looks like with the base. Later on, I'll be removing the base because I really don't like it and I, I don't need it. And you'll see why. We'll come back to it in a second. You can see that there is an LED indicator to indicate that it's on. Blue is on. Red is when it's detecting something like human motion. I disabled this LED completely because I didn't want such distraction. Luckily, there is that option in the app settings. The indoor model has an adapter so you can mount it to the wall. Just like with the outdoor model, in the back of the indoor model, you have the sync button or reset button that you will need to press in order to get it into your home network. This is how I like to mount my UFI camera to the wall. It is actually in the uh, dining room, looking down onto the dining room as well as into the living room and into the front door. The reason why I want that is because I want to be notified whenever there is human detected. And it's not just for security reason. I want it to detect humans so that the lights automatically turn on. You can see that I got rid of the base and I mounted almost flush into the wall. In order to do that, I use a USB power plug. Therefore, I didn't have to use the included power plug USB because it's really big. Well, it's not that big. It's just a standard USB power plug, but it's just that it's just bigger than my needs. I'm using a top greener outlet. Connecting it is ridiculously easy. All you have to do is pull out your existing power outlet, take the hot or the black wire, insert it into this hole, and then tighten the screw. Take the white core, insert into this hole, and tighten this screw. On top, on this side, is the ground core that you will tighten the nut in. In this angle, you can see that the camera is barely hanging onto the wall. It is super small without the included U5 power plug because I'm using the USB power outlet. Here's a video of the U5 camera on the wall. It sits really nicely with this mini adapter that I made. Let me show you how that power adapter looks like. It's just a regular USB type A. On the other end, it's just regular USB micro end. I cut whatever I don't need. Cut, 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 cut. Next, I solder the two wires. We only need two wires. One is the ground. The other one is 5 volt. We do not need the data cables. After I solder two wires in, I use hot glue to hold everything together and it's bent slightly because I want the camera to be bent downward. After you're done with the hardware installation, go ahead and install this application on your phone. On a Play Store, this is what it looks like. Find it and hit install. I didn't read this, I just hit accept. Choose your region, I'm in United States. Hit next. It will ask you for an account. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one and then sign in. Here, I'm signing in already. Click on Add Device. If you're choosing the indoor camera, go ahead and click on Indoor Camera. If you're installing the outdoor cam, go ahead and choose that. Go ahead and plug in the device if you haven't already, and then wait for the LED to turn solid blue. Click on Next in the app. It will ask for your permission to use the camera. Just click on OK and then scan the QR code that's in the back of your camera or on the bottom of your camera. Click on Sync. For the indoor model, this is in the back. For the outdoor model, it's in the bottom, under the cover. Press and hold the Sync button until you hear a beep, and then click on her beep. It might ask for your GPS to be turned on, so go ahead and allow it access to the GPS. 
Afterward, you'll see this icon connecting to the camera. Wait for about 5 seconds. You'll need to tell it how to connect to your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi SSD. So for me, I'm going to choose TMV2. Click on it and then hit confirm. Oops, I meant TMVC. And then enter the password for that Wi-Fi. Hit confirm. Now it's going to try to get the camera onto your local Wi-Fi network. The whole process should take about uh, 10 to 15 seconds to add your camera to your local Wi-Fi network. Click on next when it's done. It's going to ask for a device name. For my purpose, I'm going to use it in the kitchen or dining room. So I just click on kitchen and then hit next. Don't forget to install your micro SD card. That way you will save all the videos locally and you don't have to pay any monthly fees to the cloud storage. After you insert your micro SD card, it will ask you if you want to format it. Format. I'm using a 128 gigabyte card and the formatting takes about 10 seconds. Hit next. It'll show you how to mount the camera. You can just hit skip. Once you're done with everything, you will see a live preview of it. Click on record if you want to record the video straight to your phone photos and save it on your phone. The indoor model as well as the outdoor model has two-way audio. So if you press and hold, the person on the other end will hear you. You can click on the alarm and the siren will go off. It's not super loud, but it's loud enough to get attention. If you want to hear what's on the other side, click on this to allow the volume to come in. Click on this gear icon on the top to go to the settings. You can turn off that status LED blue or red right here. Just click on off if you want it to be off. Click on motion detection so you can see some of the options. Here you can see that I'm only interested in human. Click on the activity zone if you want the camera to ignore some of the areas. There's an option to do continuous recording straight to the micro SD card. So if you have a 128 gigabyte car like me, it will record 288 hours or 12 days. When the 13 days comes, then it will record over the first day. So it's going to record over the oldest days or hours. I bumped the recording quality all the way to 2K, which is the maximum for this camera. You can select the various notifications. Go to storage if you want to change the settings. I don't have cloud storage. I do have local storage, which is on a micro SD card. If you have a nice server, you can always get the stream straight onto the server, which is RTSP, real time streaming protocol. The cloud is actually not bad. So you can see that for one camera, it will record videos up to 30 days for $3 a month. When you're done with the settings, you'll see all of your cameras on this main page in the devices tab. If you click on events, it will show you all of the videos that were recorded during certain events such as human detected. One of the nice feature is the security tab. Check it out. In the security tab, you can see that you can set the home, away, disarm, and schedule. For home, you can click on the settings and you will see what's going on. In home mode, I just want to be notified when somebody's in the kitchen. And you'll see why later on. I definitely don't want record video when I'm home because I don't need it. When you set the security to a way mode, then it will record the video as well as get notifications to your phone. Very cool. In schedule mode, you can tell it when to start and when to stop recording as well as push notification. All right, now comes the fun part, installing this into Home Assistant. Go ahead and click on Supervisor, Add-on Store, click on the three dots, and click on Repositories. I'll share you the link in the description below. Go ahead and paste it in, click on Add. You can see that I already have it added already, so I'm not going to click on Add here. I'm just going to hit Close. After you add in, you should see Home Assistant Add-on Repository in this Add-on Store. If you don't see it, go ahead and hold down Control F5 on your keyboard to refresh this whole page. The thing that we want is U5 Home Assistant MQTT Bridge. Click on it and then click on install. After you install, go ahead and go into configuration tab. Tell it your U5 username and password, the one that you created when you installed the app. Next, 
enter the MQTT server and the username and password of that MQTT server. In this video, I'm not going to go over MQTT, but I'll make a video eventually. It's really easy, trust me. After you're done entering the credentials for your MQTT, click on Save. Go back to the Info tab, highlight Watchdog, turn it on, and then click on Start. Go back to Configuration, go to Integrations, go to MQTT, and here you'll see your device that you added in the beginning of this video. I named mine Kitchen, so that's what you'll see, Kitchen. Here you can see all of the entities that we're interested in. The only thing that I want is person detected and it shows up as a binary, on or off. Let's create an automation where a human is detected and then the lights will turn on in the dining room. Go to configuration, automation and create a new automation. I'm going to name it auto turn on kitchen light when person is detected. The trigger will be the entity that we found earlier in the MQTT, which is binary sensor dot kitchen person detected. When that turns from off to on, go ahead and call this service. The service will be lights on. And then pick the entity. The entity will be the lights in the dining room, kitchen room. Click on save when you're done. And that's it. Pretty cool, right? This is a really, really good camera for what it can do. The AI is deadly on. It's always accurate every time. One other thing I don't like about this integration is that it's going through a UFI server somewhere out there. So if you don't have the internet on for this camera, then this integration will not work. Luckily, the RTSP integration with Frigate will work because Frigate is always local. And if that's something that you are interested in, then check out my other video on Frigate and how to set up the RTSP for human detection. In summary, these two cameras are really good for what they are. They are very small. The resolution is shockingly good for something that small. It's not as great as the big boy that I used to install, such as the Amcrest 4K, but that Amcrest 4K is ridiculously much bigger than this. Hopefully you found my quick review of the camera's installation and how to integrate it into Home Assistant helpful. Let me know what you think of the cameras in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.